I am Dr. Alberto Maud. Um, I'm an assistant professor uh, at the Department of Neurology and the Department of Radiology at the Paul L. Foster School of Medicine uh, here at Texas Tech University Health Science Center of El Paso. And I'm the director of the uh, stroke program and the neurointerventional program at the University Medical Center of El Paso. Um, I am a full trained neurologist and with a special trainees in neurointervention. What it is very new to El Paso community is that the University Medical Center of El Paso is able to offer these new modalities of treatment to our community. We are working in conjunction with our private hospitals to actually get uh, a community effort to try to deliver these new modalities to our community of El Paso and the surrounding areas of West Texas and Southern New Mexico. What is really new is actually this room in which has the capability to perform these neurointerventional procedures. This is one of the latest generation of a neuroangiography suite and, and basically the capabilities of this room is actually to get a 2D image at the same time of the brain blood vessels from the front view and from the side view that is called a biplane angiography which is a minimal requirement to uh, perform these neurointerventional procedures. Advanced wire 10 centimeters, please. So what means neurointervention? Uh, it's a new modality of treatment. It's a minimally invasive way to treat the cerebrovascular disorders, the disorders that affect the brain arteries, the neck arteries, as well as um, arteriovenous malformations inside the head and intracranial aneurysms. And we insert the wire to actually select the right common femoral artery. This is what is called the modified Seldinger technique. We access the brain arteries through the groin arteries and using these um, tubular structures that are called catheters. Catheters are thread through the groin inside the aorta and further selecting the arteries here in the neck. When we are able to place these big straws called guiding catheters, we are able to thread small microcatheters to actually achieve the brain arteries and work on it. It's a complex shape and reason. So you agree it's an odd shape. Huh? Looks like a boot. Huh? We can work in two ways. We can unplug brain blood vessels, arteries, in people who are suffering from uh, acute clotting of those vessels, a common condition in North America, which is called ischemic stroke, or we can actually clot them off. Um, there is um, a condition which is called um, a hemorrhagic stroke, in which there is bursting of arteries in the brain or actually abnormal uh, malformations called arteriovenous malformation or intracranial aneurysm. So with our catheters inside the brain, we can work either ways, actually open them up or closing them off, depending according to the circumstances that we are dealing with an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. Here is the aneurysm coming from the posterior communicating artery. Right now, UMC of El Paso uh, has uh, the most modern technology to perform these uh, neurointerventional procedures here in our community. And that comes with uh, a machine like this, which is a biplane machine that can offer a 2D view of the brain arteries at the time that we are working on it. Uh, with the front view and with the side view, and this is the minimal requirement to perform neurointerventional procedures. As we started the program at the beginning of 2011, we were able to perform more than 150 cases of neurointerventional procedures, including diagnostic cerebral angiograms and embolizations for rupture, arteriovenous malformations inside the head, and also rupture and non-rupture intracranial aneurysms. And we were able to perform successful cases of carotid angioplasty stenting, um, at the origin of the internal carotid artery as well as intracranial angioplasties and reperfusion and revascularization for acute ischemic strokes. It is very important to offer these new modalities of treatment to El Paso community because number one, a stroke is the number one cause of disability in North America. And we, uh, in 2011, we have uh, ways to fight and decrease the incidence of a stroke from preventing strokes controlling diabetes, type 2 diabetes in the general population, uh, 
taking well care of the high blood pressure are excellent measures to actually prevent the patients to arrive to our neuroangiography suite to get an interventional treatment. That's the basic preventive uh, measurements that we should be educating our community. But sometimes, no matter what you do, the stroke happens, and we have IV clot busting medications to offer to this patient, and sometimes that's not enough, and we have to augment our uh, treatment with our procedures actually putting more clot busting medication inside the clot or giving the precious opportunity to actually mechanically pull out clots through the groin in the brain. Time is brain, and it is very important to uh, call 911 as soon as you have the first symptoms that uh, a brain attack is happening. And the most important message is do not overlook these symptoms. Try to get help as soon as possible, and the help that what we call the change of survival proposed by the American Heart Association in North America is to call 911 right away. Do not speculate that the symptoms will resolve. Even if they do resolve, this is a case that needs to be addressed within the first minutes to hours. We can do things here in the first minutes to hours. Unfortunately, we cannot do it later than that. And the main step is to arrive to an ER transported by 911 to sort that out, are we dealing with an ischemic stroke, which is overwhelming the most common cause of strokes, or are we dealing with a hemorrhagic stroke, which is the least common form, and based on that sort that out, we can proceed with adequate treatment for these patients.